Hi guys, this is part two of this bumper restoration. My body guy, John, did all the prep and all the body work in part one. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend watching that before moving on to this part, which is all about paint. The bumper is completely prepped and ready for paint. The last thing a painter's helper will do is take some wax and grease remover and go over that entire bumper really good and you don't want to leave this stuff sit on the bumper for any length of time at all you want to wipe it on and wipe it off and then leave it up to the painter himself or herself to take a tack cloth and tack it off right before they get ready to paint and uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, my favorite reason is just to get everything one uniform color. And it has to be the right color that the factory uses if you want your paint to match the other panels. So if you're only doing a door, you're going to have, if you, and you want, you know, the final product to match the rest of the car, you're going to have to use the same sealer that they used at the factory to get that color. See, the issue is paint is transparent. You can see through. If I take this bumper and just start spraying base coat on it, it's probably going to look great, and a million painters will tell you I've painted plenty of cars without a sealer coat. Um, but the issue is when a really good custom painter sees that car in the right light, if, if I do it right now on this bumper, they're going to see that body work. They have a trained eye. And they're going to come up to you and say, Dude, you should have sealed it. You should have spent another couple bucks just getting this sealed. And it's just, you know, right now it has spots of gray and, you know, a little bit of red coming through and then, and then there's that gold base coat here and a whole lot of brown base coat here and and just patches of stuff you want to get that bumper all one color and you could say well why don't you just take that you know that gray primer and just get it all one color and it's because they didn't use that gray color at the factory to get that gold and that brown shade that they were looking for. Um, it also highlights any mistake. So if you seal it right now and you see something wrong, just, you know, cut, um, fix it, and then reseal it. Um, there's, there's just a whole lot of reasons you want to get that. Just think of it as the foundation of a house you and you're building a new bumper okay and you don't want a bad foundation which is you know the house is going to look great until a storm comes and that's that's the end of the house so you're building on that sealer coat yeah and then another issue is well why don't you just take that same what i thought was black but it's actually dark gray and just get a dark gray primer and do the body work in dark gray and then just, you know, paint the whole. And it, it's because of that rattle can crap. Have you ever seen a rattle can job on anything and there's like dry streaks on it and you can tell where the person took it and you can sand it all day and it's still going to have streaks on there? Well, that too will show through the paint in the right light. So you know you just get away from the rattle cans and go ahead and seal it it's well worth every penny that you spend on it. i'm going to spray the sealer and let it sit overnight as long as you get back to it within uh, 72 hours it should be okay because it's still cured if you wait too long, that's uh, no good. Don't wait. Don't wait more than 72 hours. So I'll put the first base coat on tomorrow. But I want to take a good look at what we have. 
before I go ahead and base coat them. Uh, we're going four to one to one. Okay, four parts sealer, one part hardener, and one part reducer. Comprende? So we're using this four to one to one. Fill it up to four. Then move over a notch and put the hardener in and fill it up to four. Move over a notch and put the reducer in and fill it up to four. That should be plenty. In fact, it's probably way too much. I'm going to go three, three, three. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Alright, who stole my candle? Just fighting the weather here. This pro street stuff is not what it's cracked up to be. Should be wearing my face mask. It's pretty powerful stuff. I got all these chemicals around here. I feel like a damn scientist. First we want to attack it and we're going to blow it off. It's the air. Compressed air. Just to make sure nothing else is on there. My helper, John, has prepped the bumper, so I'm sure that it's fine. I probably got two coats on there. The first coat's going to be light, not quite a mist coat, but light. And then I'll come back with the second, much heavier coat. Um, most painters start at the top and work their way to the bottom. And I'm a little weird and start at the bottom and work my way to the top. And then, in other words, that brown coat underneath will be the first base color that we put on. And it's okay if we got paint everywhere because paint is not much slobs. And these parts. That's good. And now, the reducer. Put this in there. Okay, so. <clears throat> Here you see me uh, testing out and dialing in my gun right before I go ahead and shoot this bumper. And this is a really personal issue. I think I want to make an entirely separate video on just what to look for in a fan, in a gun. I'm really, really paranoid about orange peel. And if you don't have enough air pressure coming through your gun, you're going to have too much paint coming through your gun. And that's what causes orange peel. So I'm trying to keep that to a, a minimum. But that, that, my point is I don't even need the regulator to know how much air pressure is at the gun and I shoot right at about 29 or 30 pounds of pressure coming through the gun. So I, I kind of tend to use a bigger fan, a longer fan than most, but you still need the same amount of paint hitting uh, whatever you're spraying at the top of the fan, the middle of the fan, and the bottom of the fan. That's your big concern.
about 10 or 15 minutes later there's a couple little issues uh, I might have to put another coat of CR on here I'll show you what the issue is can you see how the body work is kind of bleeding through right there in the right light we need to cover that otherwise it's going to bleed through on the base color too as far as I can tell it's getting a little dark as far as I can tell everything else is okay so we might just dab on a little bit more right there just one more coat on the top on that side you really have to get at the right angle to see what's going on here. Oh, the oh, body work looks great. It just ain't covered right in that one spot. At a minimum, I'm going to let this dry overnight. I don't want to it even after it's dry so I, I think I'm just going to blow it off and I don't know we'll decide these things when we get there but yeah that's an issue I don't know if the camera's picking this up now it is see it right there the camera is you know I only half the bumper is showing because I was only going to do that right half or that driver's side top of the bumper. That's all I was going to reseal just to cover up that one piece of body work. But then I thought, you know what, as I was doing it, yeah, otherwise I would have reset the camera to capture the whole thing. And as I was doing it, I just said, hey, let's just put a whole other coat on this entire bumper. So, sorry about this, but you're only going to see this part. At very great right at that point, I decided, hey, let's just shoot the whole thing because there could be more. this it'll be fine for a few days um, I'm just going to cover it up and mark it so I don't get it mixed up with anything else and if we need it we need it if we don't say well be well I call it PPG um, just because I mean they have a great reputation so I got some pricing, and the pricing was too high for their top shelf brand. And so the guy recommended Omni, and I'm like, and then, you know, the price came down substantially. And it's like, I know enough about paint and sealer and clear coat to know that it's not going to make a whole lot of difference in the quality of the product. Um, Really, painting is more about technique and, and uh, thinking. Uh, you, you really, it's like playing pool. You have to be thinking. If you get, 
if you get mentally lazy, you're probably going to come out with a really bad job. You just have to be all there to do it. And I'm used to thinking like that. So I knew Omni was a good brand. I just, I mean, I'd never used it. I religiously used DuPont for a couple of years when I was out in California. But that's just because the company I was working for, they were, you know, they were insistent on it. They were getting great prices on it. And so, I was, you know, just kind of wanted a change from DuPont. So I went with Omni and I'm very happy. It's time to call back the painter's helper and get him to tape this off and mask off the top portion of the bumper. We're using blue painter's tape here and I kind of regret this and I'll explain that to you at some point in this video. It was just a little too hard to get off without using a razor blade on it and yeah it was unnecessary but we, anyway we have to prep this bumper now that it has a sealer on it and we're going to use grease and wax remover again on it and it should be good to go for the painter to tack it and maybe blow it off and then go ahead and lay that first coat of base coat at the bottom portion of the bumper. So we got a three to three, and that should be enough. You have to remember, we're only doing half the bumper, and it's the bottom half that we start with because it will pass backwards. So even, even parts of both have the base coat and the reducer.
most painters don't filter just the paint. They, they wait until they get it mixed together and then they filter it into the gun. I do both. You're probably wondering if any of the uh, if any of the metallic stuff got trapped in the filter because it was so thick. And I'm washing it out right now. I get it about 15 minutes between, you know, flash time. Flash time is just the time in between coats. And we're just going with a light coat first, just an adhesion coat. And being very careful not to put it on too thick. And then the second coat will be pretty thick and we'll probably need a third coat too. We'll just see what happens. This is the, uh, this is the time. <laughs> This box here is perfect for holding your gun upright.
too windy to paint. I was lucky to get out just in time. The wind picked up a lot about 15 20 minutes after I got done that bumper. I was just hoping it wasn't still tacky because there's just too much dust flying around. There's leaves falling and everything else, bugs flying around. So, I'm just going to call it a day and, and I'll wait about four hours and then I'll pull that tape off. And uh, tomorrow, if we have any luck, we'll put the, uh, the other base coat on the bolt.
They put that last base coat on really thick, the second base coat. And um, so I'm going to give it a little bit more time uh, to cure before I put the third base coat on. I checked it and, and tried to make sure I didn't miss anything, you know. It's really easy to, to just get so focused that you forget the small things, which are actually big things. Like between the chrome up under, you know the moldings and all that stuff. Your first instinct is to just say, just put paint on it and it's going to get there. Don't worry about it. But that's not true. Uh, one of the old time YouTubers who painted cars was always saying the paint will not turn the corner. So you have to turn with it parallel to the corner. And it's, you got to keep that in the forefront of your mind because although you know overspray is everywhere it's not going to turn that corner he's absolutely right so you have to make sure it gets it up in there it's easy but it's a bit stressful because I mean so much can go wrong you know it's looking good base coats. Now we're going to pull that bottom paper off, the bottom part of the bumper, and clear coat it. But you can wait for as long as you need to wait to do the clear coat. And then the final step is to cut and rub the clear coat. And uh, that's it. Clear coat is the most nerve-wracking part of this process because it tends to highlight and bring to the surface any mistakes. And it seems like it's magnifying the hell out of it. Somebody can look at a bumper or a door panel and a job like this and say it's perfect. But the painter is looking at it going, yeah, just saying it's tiny little microscopic flaws like fish eyes. I know I have at least two or three of them on there. Um, specks of dirt getting in the paint. You can't help that outside. You can do your best to keep it to a minimum. But there's only so much you can do. Uh, so that, that's why we, we cut and rub the clear coat. We can we can get most of that out of there but just by making the clear coat crystal crystal smooth 
Um, that too is a little bit stressful because you don't want to break, break through the clear coat when you're cutting it. So yeah, a clear coat, and it seems to attract, you know, dust and bugs. Taste, it's just real sticky stuff and it just seems to trap everything and draw everything in. So we'll be wetting down uh, the entire ground before we do a clear coat. But I'm glad this step is over and finally there's base coat on top of the sealer because if you wait too long, if you wait more than three days, you're going to have to cut the sealer, the sand the sealer. And I didn't want to, have, you know, I'm done with the sanding until the clear coat is dry. So. Yeah, it's a long process. It's worth it. coat doesn't doesn't have a uh, reducer mixed in it it just has a clear coat hardener and it makes this four to one I don't know if you can see this cup on camera we're not we're using this this column right here it says four to one to one but we don't need that last one so we're just going to ignore it there's four parts clear to one part hardener so we're coming up to this four here in this column and then we're going to add the hardener up to this middle four and we're just going to ignore that last four. You with me? Just four to one uh, clear coat to hardener. And clear has its own hardener. Don't use the hardener that you use for the uh, sealer. Mix that for about a minute, maybe two minutes. But try not to get bubbles in there. You're treating this whole process a little bit different than the paint.
Your coast the most nerve wracking because if something's going to go wrong, that's where it's going to go wrong. Once that dries, and I'll give it about four or five hours to dry, and I'll unmask it and show you what everything looks like. The chrome, chrome, well, it's not chrome anymore. It's that's what's under it, gray primer. And then you go down to the plastic if you burn through it. Can you see that? Stay in focus. Uh, for both the sealer and the clear coat, at the end, um, I'm using a one point seven tip. Uh, I could sit here and talk about the physics of spray guns all day, but I don't want to bore you to death. And for both base coats, I'm using the same gun, which is a one point four 
So if you see me, I don't know where it's at right now. If you see me with the red gun, um, that's a 1.7 tip. And if you see me with the blue gun, um, that's a 1.4 tip. And I, I say I use 1.4 for the base coats.